Yashar, Jasher, 19. And the cities of Saddam had four judges to four cities. And these were their names. Sarak in the city of Saddam, Sharkad in Amora, Zavnak in Adma, and Minon in Sevoim, and Eliezer, Avraham's servant, applied to them different names, and he converted Sarak to Shakra, Sharkad to Shakrura, Zevnak to Kezovim, and Manon to Mazlodin. And by desire of their four judges, the people of Saddam and the Mora had beds erected in the streets of the city. And if a man came to these places, they laid hold of him and brought him to one of their beds and by force made him to lie in it. And as he lay down, three men would stand at his head and three at his feet and measure him by the length of the bed. And if the man was less than the bed, these six men would stretch him at each end. And when he cried out to them, they would not answer him. And if he was longer than the bed, they would draw together the two sides of the bed at each end until the man had reached the gates of death. And if he continued to cry out to them, they would answer him saying, Thus shall it be done to a man that comes into our land. And when men heard all these things that the people of the cities of Saddam did, they refrained from coming there. And when a poor man can, came to their land, they would give him silver and gold and cause a proclamation in the whole city not to give him a morsel of bread to eat. And if the stranger should remain there some days and die from hunger, not having been able to obtain a morsel of bread, then at his death all the people of the city would come and take their silver and gold which they had given to him. And those that could recognize the silver or gold which they had given him took it back. And at his death they also stripped him of his garments, and they would fight about them. And he that prevailed over his neighbor took them. They would after that carry him and bury him under some shrubs in the deserts. So they did all the days to anyone that came to them and died in their land. And in the course of time, Sarah sent Eliezer to Saddam to see Lot and inquire after his welfare. And Eliezer went to Saddam and he met a man of Saddam fighting with a stranger. And the man of Saddam stripped the poor man of all his clothes and went away. And this poor man cried to Eliezer, and supplicated his favor on account of what the man of Saddam had done to him. And he said to him, Why do you act thus to the poor man who came to your land? And the man of Saddam answered Eliezer, saying, Is this man your brother? Or have the people of Saddam made you a judge this day, that you speak about this man? And Eliezer strove with the man of Saddam on account of the poor man. And when Eliezer approached to recover the poor man's clothes from the man of Saddam, he hastened and with the stone smote Eliezer in the forehead.
and the blood flowed copiously from Eliezer's forehead. And when the man saw the blood, he caught hold of Eliezer, saying, Give me my hire for having rid you of this bad blood that was in your forehead, for such is the custom and the law in our land. And Eliezer said to him, You have wounded me and require me to pay your hire? And Eliezer would not hearken to the words of the man of Saddam. And the man laid hold of Eliezer and brought him to Shachra, the judge of Saddam, for judgment. And the man spoke to the judge, saying, I beseech you, my lord, thus has this man done. For I smote him with the stone that the blood flowed from his forehead, and he is unwilling to give me my hire. And the judge said to Eliezer, This man speaks truth to you. Give him his hire, for this is the custom in our land. And Eliezer heard the words of the judge, and he lifted up a stone and smote the judge. And the stone struck on his forehead, and the blood flowed copiously from the forehead of the judge. And Eliezer said, If then this is, rather, if this then is the custom in your land, give you unto this man what I should have given him. For this has been your decision. You did decree it. And Eliezer left the man of Saddam with the judge, and he went away. And when the kings of Elam had made war with the kings of Saddam, the kings of Elam captured all the property of Saddam, and they took Lot captive with his property. And when it was told to Avram, he went and made war with the kings of Elam. And he recovered from their hands all the property of Lot, as well as the property of Sidam. At that time, the woman of Lot bore him a daughter, and he called her name Paltit, saying, Because Elohim had delivered him and his whole household from the kings of Elam, and Paltit, daughter of Lot, grew up, and one of the men of Sidam took her for a woman. And a poor man came into the city to seek a maintenance, and he remained in the city some days, and all the people of Sidam caused a proclamation of their custom not to give this man a morsel of bread to eat until he dropped dead upon the earth. And they did so. And Paltit, the daughter of Lot, saw this man lying in the streets, starved with hunger, and no one would give him anything to keep him alive. And he was just upon the point of death. And her soul was filled with pity on account of the man, and she fed him secretly with bread for many days, and the soul of this man was revived. For when she went forth to fetch water, she would put the bread in the water pitcher. And when she came to the place where the poor man was, she took the bread from the pitcher and gave it to him to eat. So she did many days. And all the people of Saddam and Amorah wondered how this man could bear starvation for so many days. And they said to each other, This can only be that he eats and drinks, for no man can bear starvation for so many days or live as this man has without even his countenance changing. And three men concealed themselves in a place where the poor man was stationed to know who it was that brought him bread to eat. And Paltit, daughter of Lot, went forth that day to fetch water, and she put bread into her pitcher of water, 
and she went to draw water by the poor man's place. And she took out the bread from the pitcher and gave it to the poor man, and he ate. And the three men saw what Paltith did to the poor man. And they said to her, It is you, then, who has supported him. And therefore has he not starved, nor changed in appearance, nor died like the rest. And the three men went out of the place in which they were concealed, and they seized Paltit and the bread which was in the poor man's hand. And they took Paltit and brought her before the judges, rather their judges, and they said to them, Thus did she do, and it is she who supplied the poor man with bread. Therefore did he not die all this time. Now therefore declare to us the punishment due to this woman for having transgressed our law. And the people of Saddam and the Morah assembled and kindled a fire in the street of the city. And they took the woman and cast her into the fire, and she was burned to ashes. And in the city of Adma there was a woman to whom they did the like. For a traveler came into the city of Adma to abide there all night, with the intention of going home in the morning, and he sat opposite the door of the house of the young woman's father, to remain there as the sun had set when he had reached that place. And the young woman saw him sitting by the door of the house, and he asked her for a drink of water, and she said to him, Who are you? And he said to her, I was this day going on the road, and reached here when the sun set, so I will abide here all night. And in the morning I will arise early and continue my journey. And the young woman went into the house and fetched the man bread and water to eat and drink. And this affair became known to the people of Adma. And they assembled and brought the young woman before the judges, that they should judge her for this act. And the judge said, the judgment of death must pass upon this woman because she transgressed our law. And this, therefore, is the decision concerning her. And the people of those cities assembled and brought out the young woman and anointed her with honey from head to foot, as the judge had decreed, and they placed her before a swarm of bees, which were then in their hives. And the bees flew upon her and stung her, that her whole body was swelled. And the young woman cried out on account of the bees. But no one took notice of her or pitied her and her cries ascended to heaven. And Yahuwah was provoked at this, and all the works of the cities of Saddam, for they had abundance of food, and had tranquility amongst them, and still would not sustain the poor and the needy. And in those days their evil doings and sins became great before Yahuwah. And Yahuwah sent for two of the angels that had come to Avraham's house to destroy Saddam and its cities. And the angels rose up from the door of Avraham's tent after they had eaten and drunk, and they reached Saddam in the evening. And Lot was then sitting in the gate of Saddam, and when he saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed down to the ground. And he pressed them greatly and brought them into his house, and he gave them victuals which they ate, 
and they abode all night in his house. And the angels said to Lot, Arise, go forth from this place, you and all belonging to you, lest you be consumed in the iniquity of this city, for Yahuwah will destroy this place. And the angels laid hold upon the hand of Lot, and upon the hand of his woman, and upon the hands of his children, and all belonging to him. And they brought him forth, and set him without the cities. And they said to Lot, Escape for your life. And he fled, and all belonging to him. Then Yahuwah reigned upon Sidam and upon Amorah, and upon all these cities, brimstone and fire from Yahuwah out of heaven. And he overthrew these cities, all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew upon the ground. And Edo, the woman of Lot, looked back to see the destruction of the cities, for her compassion was moved on account of her daughters who remained in Saddam, for they did not go with her. And when she looked back, she became a pillar of salt, and it is yet in that place unto this day. And the oxen which stood in that place daily licked up the salt to the extremities of their feet. And in the morning it would spring forth afresh, and they again lick, licked it up unto this day. And Lot and two of his daughters that remained with him fled and escaped to the cave of Adalam, and they remained there for some time. And Avraham rose up early in the morning to see what had been done to the cities of Saddam. And he looked and beheld the smoke of the cities going up like the smoke of a furnace. And Lot and his two daughters remained in the cave and they made their father drink wine, and they lay with him. For they said there was no man upon earth that could raise up seed from them, for they thought that the whole earth was destroyed. And they both lay with their father, and they conceived and bore sons. And the firstborn called the name of her son Moab, saying, from my father did I conceive him. He is the father of the Moavim unto this day. And the younger also called her son Ben-Ami. He is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. And after this, Lot and his two daughters went away from there, and he dwelt on the other side of the Riyardan with his two daughters and their sons. And the sons of Lot grew up, and they went and took themselves women from the land of Canaan, and they begat children, and they were fruitful and multiplied. <laughs>